Welcome to InfraWorks 2021 sessions. Uh, in, this, uh, in this webinar this morning, we're going to uh, explore what's new with InfraWorks and uh, what's, what are some of the uh, new things that we can do with it, what some existing things we can do with it, what can you expect of InfraWorks in general. Uh, my intention is to browse and explore the user interface. Uh, they have redesigned the interface uh, and dramatically made it more, what, much more efficient to you find the commands we're looking for. Uh, we're going to integrate a couple uh, sources, uh, GIS sources, CAD sources, Revit sources, as we aggregate the model. InfraWorks is very good at aggregating several sources of data from so many places into one cohesive model for the present. And we're going to take a look at how we can utilize that. Uh, we can also theme and stylize the project um, based on rules that we can apply. We'll create a couple of objects, uh, uh, road objects, bridge objects, as well, uh, those are design objects. And then we are going to as well create some environment objects like trees, cars, utility poles, and things like that to, be, to give the site more perspective when we are sharing it with the client or stakeholder. We're also going to synchronize this design data with Civil 3D and also communicate it with a video similar to the one that you have just saw. So let's get started. Going to first uh, start InfraWorks. And this is InfraWorks 2020. From the get-go, you don't see much different. Uh, the icon looks a little different. Uh, but so far, uh, we still have all the files for each model that we have. In order to create a model, if you have not been uh, using InfraWorks, you can create a new model from scratch up top or uh, use the model builder. The model builder is very powerful in that it aggregates existing data that it can find online. Uh, things like uh, buildings and roads uh, from, uh, from GIS. So that's an open street map org is our source for that. Uh, we also have green imagery that we can utilize and as well as uh, terrain data for the US, it's from USGS coming directly from there automatically. We don't have to find it hunted down or anything. It's already going to be included in our model. So once I search someplace, give the model a name, it'll take a couple of minutes and I'll get a new model, a new blank model similar to this one. So this is what I get. I have done nothing with this model so far. And as you can see, there is a terrain data in here, surface data, which is a good start, good reference point, not as accurate as we'd like, but it's a good base point. We have roads, at, those are GIS planning roads. And if we uh, have any buildings that are available to us from openstreetmap.org, they will show up. For this particular site, they had no one, no buildings included. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, explore the user interface a little bit. So uh, we've got the manage tab, we can manage the model. First thing we wanna do is take the model properties here, assign the model uh, coordinate systems. This is very critical to uh, calibrate and send data back to Civil 3D for further detailed design. We can also take a look at the model explorer and what uh, things we want to show or not show based on our visibility light bulb there, similar to layers, and proposals. Proposals is design alternatives that you may have. Uh, we're so used to creating design alternatives as a uh, new file, we save as the old file. In InfraWorks, the, the whole project is one model, and then we uh, create different proposals as alternatives. So we can manage the proposals there. Now I'd like to get uh, additional sources in there. This is nice and great, but let's put some stuff in there. So I'm gonna start by adding some sources, data sources here. 
as content. And we can add so many different uh, sources, uh, an FBX file as a 3D model that comes from uh, other applications. We can add additional AutoCAD 3D geometry. Uh, I'm going to be using that in a little bit. We can add um, a 2D underlay, similar to the concept of extracting a PDF in AutoCAD. We can kind of like overlay a PDF, uh, you know, uh, an AutoCAD drawing, but it'll come in as as a just a visual underlay of line work. We can have the civil 3D data objects come into here like corridors. This is a huge enhancement that uh, was made for uh, civil 3D and InfraWorks 2021. The ability to uh, work with actual civil 3D corridors in InfraWorks have been greatly enhanced. I will explore that a little further. Autodesk Prava, which is great in structure, building or bridge can be uh, coordinated from uh, uh, Revit to InfraWorks and back. So very, very good data collaboration there. And uh, we have Linux, Mel, IXC, raster images, point clouds from recap, SDF and shape files, and also sketchup files. So many, many different data sources that we can utilize. And that makes InfraWorks a, a huge advantage in, in the ability to aggregate and coordinate a whole project from many, many different sources that we may have. So let me start with the shape file. I'm going to simply add a shape file here, an Esri shape file uh, containing our properties. So just like that, we add a shape file. It's not configured, uh, doesn't come in configured. We have to configure it. And basically, what we're doing here is we're telling the software. What is this object represent? So is this going to be parcels, coverages, buildings? What is it? So I'm going to just tell it, hey, this is a parcel, and I give it a style. So let's uh, assign a style on that. Let's do white, close and refresh, and automatically it's going to be reprojected based on the coordinate system of the model and the coordinate system assigned to it. The shape file, and there we go. We can also add additional sources, not, not just shape files that we may have on our uh, desktop, but also uh, from Esri ArcGIS. Directly from ArcGIS, we can import or make a connection, a live connection between data that is in ArcGIS and data that is on in, in the model. So. If I want, I can add ArcGIS connector here, and this will enable you to make a connection to your ArcGIS portal. Now I'm connected to ArcGIS online, but you can also connect to your own organizational portal if you have an enterprise portal with ArcGIS. I'm going to simply select Browse the Living Atlas here and public content, and I'm going to say I'd like to have. I want to get blood. Yeah, let's see what they have in there. So here we have a, a layer that is available that we may be wanting to use. It contains two sources. Uh, counties and 100 year flood. I'm interested in the 100 year flood, so I'm gonna give that up. the eye symbol here gives you a, a little representation of what that is. And most importantly, I've got to give it a type. So I'm going to do, give this for a coverage area. Coverage areas are kind of like a hatch pattern that you can apply. So something that you can stylize with a pattern. And simply add to the design project. Take a, take a minute. And it'll make a connection to ArcGIS and add the content in here. So, one moment. So, there we go. We now have uh, these zones. If I select one, there is the asset card for the object. And notice that there is all kinds of ArcGIS attributes available to us, it's read only, because this one is a public. It may be even right if I had it uh, set that way for permissions in ArcGIS. 
Uh, but notice the flood zone here is AE, and this one perhaps is a flood zone of E. So this one is not too bad, but let's say uh, we'd like to stylize that so it's not all green like this. We can very easily apply a feature theme. So I can I can create a feature theme here and I can say, hey, I want a, a flood theme. Oh, let's zone theme. And I'm gonna say this is gonna be the class. And I'm going to say I would like to make it a different color based on the flood zone uh, attribute and simply hit OK. And now I get different colors and a legend that gives me you know, visual representation of what this is. So very helpful there. Let's also add a couple more data sources. Let's say we have an image, like a better image than this big imagery. So I'm going to say I want to add the raster. And I can say yes, this images. And here is an image file. So it's an aerial image. It's a JPEG file. The most important part that we should be aware of is that it contains the word file associated with it. Whether that is a different file or it's embedded as a JPEG, it's a. It can. It needs to have a word coordinate to know where to, to lie. We can also eyeball it. Uh, and place it interactively uh, if that's needed. But I do have a word file, so it's going to come into the correct place. I'm going to came it, and it's not configured. So I'm going to double click on it and give it a type. And so it knows it's ground imagery, but it needs a coordinate system. There's a refresh. And here is one thing that's going to be interesting. We can manage the uh, draw order of these objects. Any of the surface layers, uh, those are terrains, uh, coverages, imagery, anything that you would see that are going on top of each other, the draw order of this is called surface layers. And based on the surface layers, we can figure out which one we want to see and when, and, and how is it going to be interacting with other things on top of it. So surface layers, is right there. It's also available up on the display tab, surface layers. And we get this dialog box and we can say, hey, I need to have the imagery. Uh, this is the big imagery and this is my imagery. Let's say I don't want the big imagery. I can turn it off. And, and there we go. Let's, uh, let's also add uh, a better terrain in the form of land XML. So I'm going to add an XML file for my existing site. And it's basically a nothing fancy than XML file that just gives me a better topography than the one I received from USGS. Only thing I need to do is just configure it. Now it's asking me for surface layers because uh, right now, they're introduced uh, in 2020, uh, we actually can have multiple surface layers. So uh, we can have a surface for the top surface. We can also have a subterranean surface, like a top of clay or top of sand layer. So it makes it very convenient to visualize sub layers in our brain. So right now, this is uncategorized. You can create other categories for geotechnical or airspace. Uh, so I only have one category right now. And based on the order of this, the top one wins. And it's uh, on, so it's going to overwrite my USGS surface. and gives me better, more uh, accurate data based on that survey. All right. So. Very uh, handy there. We can also kind of uh, critique this. There is a measuring tools that we can have. Like I can measure this. The nice thing about the measure tool in Infrarox is that it gives you the height, the distance, and the draped distance as a, a all in one goal. As you can see, I have a based on the two places I selected, I have a height difference of 3.4, and this is the distance. Very handy.
All right. So as you can see, there is multiple sources that we can have. Uh, we can also import point clouds and create point cloud streams or extraction. Uh, linear extraction extraction is very powerful. It does need a uh, a pretty dense laser scan that is resistant um, to extract things like curve lines, crown of road, any kind of linear uh, or vertical edges. Now let's create. So under create, we can create uh, design roads. We can create tunnels and bridges as structures, and we can also create a drainage system. Nice thing about the drainage system is that it's not it's not lost. We can very easily bring the drainage design into several 3D pipe networks and further detail it. I'm gonna jump to a different proposal here just to have a clean space. All right, and in this space, there's not much in here either. But let's say we want to create a route here. So I'm going to go as a, and draw a component route. A component route is a design route. A planning route is a route that is just a, a coming from GIS or maybe perhaps a small little path, but it does not have like a, the actual profile detail that we'd like to have in design routes. So I'm going to design a route here. Let's say I would like to put a road right here. So I'm going to click. As you can see, it's alignment based. So I have PI based that I'm going to select my PI. I can also say element based whether that's going to be a tangent or a curve. So I'm going to do like PI based. And as you can see, based on the ASHTO standards, it will automatically put in the curve for me. All right. And automatically puts in intersection objects for me, which is really, really handy. I can modify these intersections. I have, if I like, uh, we can change the assembly of it. So there is an assembly here that we can apply to the object. Road assembly, I can say, replace this assembly and I can change uh, the look of it. Let's say from here to there, I'd like to have you know, a different kind of route. Let's say this kind of road. So these can be created, modified, used, reused. Typical sections of the road. You see that it always grades, and uh, based on that grading parameter, it can put retaining walls for you automatically. So I can click uh, and change the cut and fill slopes that I'd like. Perhaps this is too much. So I can change the uh, parameters. So as you can see, I've increased the, the limit, and then uh, it always will put in a wall for you automatically when it finishes the grading. All right, let's say I'd like to put in a bridge over here. We can actually take a look and uh, in profile view, it's a very handy profile view here. Gives you automatically the surface. Gives you ability to control uh, the elevation as you would. And let's say I'd like to put in a bridge at the end here. So I'm going to make it higher in the root and I'm going to say I want to put in a little curve in here symmetrical parabola and just like that we now have a curve all right so let's update that all right and then uh, let's say I'm going to extend this a little bit
Okay, if I'm interested in putting in a bridge in here, this is not really a bridge right now. It's not a bridge structure, but we can very easily just uh, go back to structures, insert the bridge. You can insert a bridge on component roads. So I'm gonna say I would, I would like a bridge from here all the way to here. Notice, once I do that, it will put in the abutments for me and the, the girders, piers, all the bridge structures that you might uh, be familiar with. So there is no bridge. Now we can have final control of this bridge. What kind of assembly I would like for this pier. Uh, a lot of different parameters that we can adjust. We can adjust how many piers I have. We can adjust the location of that pier. rotation, perhaps I'd like a different pier altogether. Right out of the box, there is concrete and, and steel bridges that we can manipulate. Uh, now this is my bridge, it's a pretty steep bridge. So here is my bridge. Let's also add uh, the new in, in InfraWorks 2021 is the ability to connect to uh, several 3D corridors and bring in the actual corridor geometry. This is really critical if we are wanting to bring in uh, uh, the super elevation calculations as calculated in several 3D or perhaps cul-de-sacs that have been created in several 3D and finally designed. Uh, so Autodesk Civil 3D drawing, I will be able to connect now and bring in the actual corridor geometry view for 2021. Now, when the road comes in, I have two options. I can either bring it in as a, uh, an infra works road, or I can bring in the component road. If I bring it in as a road, I can manipulate the alignment and profile. If I bring it in as a as a corridor geometry, corridor components, I cannot uh, bring in, uh, it is set up to be read only that way the fine details are not lost. The infra works only maintained in. Uh, in several 3D. So read options, there is now corridor component and component. So corridor component is what I'm interested in and I'm gonna just bring in that. The cool the second my set place. And then uh was a refresh that and there we go. We now have the alignment, the corridor, the profile as designed in Serial 3D. So as you can see, obviously, this is a there is a target here and the cool the sack has been designed. You cannot do that in infraworks at the moment. You can have finer control on it in Civil 3D. And you can still be able to see it in a, in a profile view. Uh, but you, as, as you can see, it's read only. You cannot change it. You can also view the cross section. And you, as you can see, the cross section gives you the actual structures as designed in Civil 3D. So as you can see, you can circuit through all the stations. It's really neat. I think it's a lot smoother than uh, cross sections in, in several 3D, personally. Mm -hmm. All right, so a lot of uh, value in here in, in the ability to visualize your civil 3D projects as well as take these designs that you've created and and the infra works and not lose them. So one of the uh, new features in Civil 3D 2021 and infra works 2021, the calibration and coordination of a civil structure. So a civil structure like this bridge can now be sent to or published. Uh, and when I publish it, it creates a, an IMX file. Uh, IMX is a file for net for a 3D object for civil structures specifically and uh, we can create the IMX file. That IMX file can be used in Civil 3D and Revit. The idea here is that we can 
project the, the bridge in 73D for sheet production and further detail the structural components of the bridge in Autodesk Revit and have a continuously synchronized model between the three applications. So I'm going to go ahead and publish my bridge project. And I'm going to say, I'm going to put this on my desktop, created an Infoworks webinar. I'm going to say this is going to be a set bridge. All right, so for now, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at Civil 3D and see what we can do with it. So blank, blank drawing, nothing in it. Uh, I also have the folder created on my desktop for the bridge. A bridge can be updated anytime. And here it is. So I have an IMX file, the JSON file for param parameters and a text document. I'm going to be bringing in the IMX file in Civil 3D. So under the Insert tab, you can say Open Infoworks Model. I'm going to go ahead and find my branch project. I'm going to set my coordinate system to match. And I'm going to refine the selection a little bit. I'm not interested in my terrain. I am interested in the alignment. And so design roads is the alignment component roads is the corridor, and but I'm interested in the alignment and the pitch. So I'm gonna do this to open model. And here it is. I have my, my alignment, I have my bridge, and we can simply create a profile view for this. As you can see, the profile came in. The profile is fully editable. And then we, new in Civil 3D is the bridge component and the bridge style. So the bridge objects are now uh, uh, an actual object in Civil 3D. It's a Civil, Civil Bridge Builder is the thing I selected. And all the parameters that are available in Infoworks also are available and present in Civil 3D. And at this point, we can simply select them and project them to the profile. And I can set the style and label that I'd like. So when I when they come in, here is my bridge. This is a pretty steep road right now, but, but here is the bridge and all the 3D geometry. Now this 3D geometry is a, a bridge object. Here is my bridge and yeah, that does have a new bridge style to manage how it looks in profile and labeled in profile. So a lot of things can be manipulated to make it the way it uh, needs to look in plan and profile. This is also a 3D object. So I can look at it in object viewer. I have my profile selected. So here is the actual bridge object. I'm missing my uh, my peer in the middle here. Now, there's more things that we can do in here, uh, like bring in the building from Revit, bring in the parking lot design that we may have designed. So I'm gonna go to a third sequence in here, and let's say. I'm going to design some elements uh, and perhaps make it look uh, the way I like it. So I designed this interchange. I brought in a building, or not the building, uh, the roads as a corridor. The roundabouts are very easy to create in Infoworks and also they will get sent to uh, uh, Civil 3D. 
So I can simply change this intersection from a corridor from a roundabout to an intersection and, and back. So it's it's very easy to modify these things. And it's not it's not like random thing. There is actual design parameters and standards that we are following to design this. Now I did bring in an AutoCAD 3D solid geometry in the form of the sign. So basically a, a lot and and a cylinder here to make this uh, small little sign, just a normal AutoCAD sign, and put in materials for the walls. Those are all InfraWorks styles that we can apply. Now let's add additional, additional elements here. We can add uh, things like furniture, city furniture. We can add additional coverages, water areas, Trees. So let's add a water area. Let's say I'm planning to put in a, a little column in here. So this is obviously for visualization purposes. It's not a design element, but we can have a, a water area. Uh, we can have a row of trees. We can have a, a row of trees in here. So we have a tree. Let's say uh, trees. There's a lot of 3D, 3D objects in here that we can have. The way you select in InfraWorks is you click once and you then you click second. When you click second, you put a bend in the row. If you want to finish the row, you double click. So double click finishes the row. When you put in a row or something, it doesn't have to be trees. You can click. Uh, Click on it once you, you have control on the tree. Click on the tree once again, you have control over the whole row. And then you can also change the density of the whole row. And then change the size if you like. Change the rotation. Change the location by vertex or by the, the group of groups. You can also add many, many different city furniture. So we have trees, we have lights, uh, we have little hybrids, fences, so many different things to make the model more appealing for visualizations. Let's add additional sources. So perhaps I've designed this parking lot and in Civil 3D and I'd like to bring it in. So in Civil 3D, I'm going to, to harness the power of shape files and, or SDFs and send the data as to create an SDF file. And no, I doesn't as a shape file. I like shape files personally more. So in shape here it is. So I'm gonna do uh, let's say parking budget payment. So it came in, I need to configure it. Doesn't know what it is yet. So that's a shape file. Now I'm gonna configure it kind of like the, the flood zones. It's a coverage area. I would like to apply a pattern to it. And I'm gonna apply a material pattern as a you know, black asphalt. So that will show up nicely as a parking, parking pavement area. That looks cool. Now let's say I would like it to bring in the striping. So that's another SDF that I created. So uh, parking, striping, this is an actual line, line work that I'd like to bring in. So there is no line work uh, type in here that we can utilize for this. So I'm going to use it as a coverage area as well. But here is the trick. So I'm going to give it a color of white. It's fucking striking as white. The trick is to thicken up the line a little bit. So the way we're going to thicken up the line work is by buffering it. So under the table tab, uh, we can buffer it. And if I buffer it, like, so let's say, for example, 0.5, the actual stripe is going to be one foot wide. So I'm making it pretty thick for representation, but 
basically uh, the line work in as an AutoCAD line. When I thicken the thicken at that point five buffering get 0.5 on either side of it, it'll thicken up and give me the visual effect of a line. But in reality, it's the line with a buffer around it, 0.5 on, in, in both sides. And let's final final shape file here. Let's put a name for another shape file that I've created. And the curve is a line. So coverage area. And, and give it a style, material. Let's do parking area. No. Let's do roadway and let's choose a curve style. So it's a bit net for a curve. Let's buffer that. So I'm going to buffer that with some thick point five. Let's see refresh. And that way I can get a representation of my curve line going around. Okay. So it looks very nice. So we could obviously keep doing that. I don't want to waste your time, but I we can uh, bring in the Autodesk Revit model for the building, uh, which I will do. Uh, cars, cars are available in city furniture as well. There is hydrants. Let's put in a hydrant. Put in this little hydrant, hydrant here. Now hydrant, I just want to place once. So I'm going to double click, double click. This is a hydrant. Now I have a hydrant for, for representation and make it bigger and small. And now uh, you can look at it. Now I uh, worked on this a little bit more and we've added a couple of more features in here. I added the number of people because the level model for the building. And uh, you can also add the culverts. I added the culvert and the drainage system on the same culvert here. So we have culvert going through and the, the manholes and catch pieces that can easily be transmitted to 73D as a quiet network. Now, let's say I'm interested in looking at this uh, in, the, in ArcGIS again. So for some reason, we'd like to uh, share this data with uh, a GIS analyst. Very simple. Uh, we can go to the present and share tab and on the share, we can export it or publish it to ArcGIS, just like how I connected to ArcGIS. We can also publish to ArcGIS, or I can export it to a file geodatabase uh, if I'm using ArcGIS Pro. I'm going to publish it to ArcGIS on the same account that they have. You can publish it to any account that you are granted access to. I'm going to make it an entire model. I'm going to only publish a specific feature in here. And as you can see, there is a lot of things that you can publish. So on the pipeline and pipeline connectors is my manual structures. So I'm going to only publish these two. Now new in 7.3D and InfraWorks 2021 is the ability to pick which property you'd like to send over. So as you can see, there is a lot of properties here that might not be relevant to the GIS analyst. And perhaps those are a little bit overwhelming. So let's say I would like to put in, I would like to have the union and the material only. So pipe material. So for pipe, I would like to have a pipe material and pipe name. For pipeline connectors, which is the manhole structures, I would like also to have the name and Yeah, the part type, let's say part type as well. So um, I chose those two properties that I'd like to use. Now I'm going to give my layer a new name. Story. And tags, I'm going to say set project. And under advanced settings, we'd like to give it access to the my group, so my MicroCAD group. And I'm going to hit next. 
I'll put it in this particular project blue folder. This is just a folder uh, hierarchy that I have in ArcGIS Online. It will take a couple of minutes. And then uh, now it's published. Let's view it. Let's just to make sure that everything is, is good. So here is our, our pipe system. And I've lost it. Here it is. And as you can see, I've only extracted three, uh, two properties, the uh, pilot name and the material, and also the length, as well as for the structures, I gave it the name and the part type. So the name was in this, and, and the, there they are. Now you can obviously add a much, much more properties than that. I just want to keep it simple. And, and you can stylize it based on what kind of structure you want uh, for Cartography, what styles you like to show on the layer. So we can use ArcGIS assets and we can so consume it and also publish it. We can also modify it and save it there. Now, back into InfraWorks, there is actually two uh, visual styles out of the box and you can add additional visual styles, but the engineering view right now and the conception view are the two out of the box view styles, visual styles. Uh, you can add or uh, change the configuration of these, but the fact that I see my contours is managed uh, by the visual style as well as the quality of the graphics. So if I flip to conception, you can see that I have a way nicer looking model for, for visualizations purposes. Obviously, it's a little bit more on the software processing we can see the uh, effect of the time of day based on shadows so more of a visual effect but the time of day obviously is, has an effect also the date of the year has an effect which is really cool so as you can see the sun looks pretty gloomy Right, let's say in summer, I like summer, summer, summer. So summer, summer is nice and bright. And two of the most uh, handy ways of exporting out of InfraWorks is creating uh, snapshots. Snapshots are great because when you make it the way you like it, you want to share it. And we can share it at a very high resolution level, any, any level that we'd like. Uh, it's not just like a print screen, it's, it's a high quality image that you can utilize in your books. But also, very nice thing to use in the generation of videos. You can create a storyboard. So, when there's a storyboard player, once you created it, I'm going to create it. So, right now we have, let's, let me delete this one. And let's create a new storyboard. Storyboards are a video creator, and you can save them. I, as you can see, I have multiple ones, so I can uh, I can create a video just like the one I saw I, I showed at the beginning. There's a couple of methods. I can follow my component load as if I was driving on it. I can also add a camera path, or I can save my path and import the path. So I'm gonna simply create a camera path here and this is the simplest way but also really cool way so you, you take pictures so i'm going to add a take a picture right here let's say i want to add a picture right here the plus sign and just keep going that way i'm going to take a picture right here let's say i'd like to take a closer look at this roundabout 
here. Here. here, and then finally, let's go back to kind of overall view here. And so, here now you can also add uh, subtitles and some visual effects. There is a number of visual effects that you can have. Uh, so animation around animation or the animation uh, a walk. So many different types of visual effects or, or animations that you can add to this. Uh, you always double check the speed of the video. So uh, the speed is managed in the properties of the view frame here and as you can see, I am uh, saying time to next frame is three seconds. That may be a little bit too slow. So I'm going to increase my driving speed a little bit. Let's say I'm driving at 65 miles an hour. Now, the next picture is simply going to say keep speed. So it's not, you can have different speeds. For this video, I'm just keeping it all the same speed. And the first picture manages the speed of the frame. So let's play. So, Take a quick peek here. So some of the things that you might notice about Infoworks is that there is no print button. And so this is one way of exporting your, your visual project. Uh, but there you cannot print uh, like a, a document. And there is also no save button. So Always be careful that it's it's saving in the fly on the fly, so uh, it never it never needs you to save manually, but also every change you make is being saved. So be careful when making edits. But just in a, in a couple of seconds, we've created a video. Now this video can be exported. I can you can uh, hit. Uh, this guy right here, export current storyboard to video, and there is multiple uh, formats that we can ex ex uh, export it as. AVI is one of them in this media. Uh, there is uh, the MG tech. So multiple ways you can set your resolution for the video and then save it out and share it with your with the client or board meetings or other things like that. Makes a, a much easier way to visualize the intent of the project when it's in the context of the environment and uh, what is the intent behind the design. So Civil 3D obviously is the sort of choice for detailed design, but Infoworks really shines with visualizations and, and, and two representations of what the project is going to be. So, I wanted to give you a little overview of what's new in Infraworks this year. Uh, the bridge workflow is a major one. Uh, ArcGIS properties, uh, being able to select these properties, that's a, a new, uh, a new uh, feature as well. Also, if you have a high resolution monitor, 4K monitor, uh, you used to have very small, tiny icons, now you have much more legible icons with, with uh, 4K support uh, built into Infraworks 2021. So I hope with this uh, webinar, it was beneficial and give you a little overview of what Infraworks can do for your next project. Thank you.